Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. There are different views on how to assess uh, the quality of music in the 70s, and I, I think that's fair because I think there's a uh, very uh, high quality for what we might call classic rock and some very low quality for uh, top 40 music. Uh, that said, most of the 70s, I was young enough that my interests were more uh, top 40, but I don't want to talk about top 40 music today so much as uh, remembering that the 70s were pretty much a, uh, a sort of golden age uh, for, uh, what do they call the music that's sort of silly or funny novelty songs. That's the word I'm looking for, uh, novelty songs. And even they used to play on top 40 radio, uh, uh, comedy skits off of comedy albums. Uh, and you know, they would do skits from, uh, uh Cheech and Chong. That's how most of us probably first heard of Cheech and Chong before there were uh, movies or before they went their separate ways. There was Cheech and Chong on the radio. Uh, there were, uh, again, this is the top of the career for Ray Stevens, who, uh, was, you know, in, in essence, he was Weird Al before Weird Al. He didn't do, uh, sort of riffs on other people's music but all he did was novelty songs songs like the streak uh, which by the way focused in on another 70s uh weird <laughs> cultural phenomenon of streaking well another uh one of those novelty songs uh sort of highlighted another strange uh broad interest uh from the 70s that, that sort of crossed uh, different genres. Uh, and I'm talking specifically about martial arts and even more clearly about Kung Fu. Now, I don't pretend to know uh, any of the differences between uh, Judo and Karate and Kung Fu and Jiu Jitsu and all the different uh, names for these things. But I do remember, first of all, the TV show Kung Fu, which was a 70s show, uh, I don't remember whether it's David Carradine or Keith Carradine, but uh, one of them is uh, sort of a an expert at Kung Fu who becomes this hero and travels around during the cowboy days. And uh, that was a, a big success. And then there was also uh, the, uh, gosh, what is the guy's name? Uh, Billy Jack, the Billy Jack movies that uh, played on this. So you had you had movies and TV shows focused in on this idea of Kung Fu. There was also uh, a, a one of these novelty songs. You remember everyone was everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Those cats were quick as a lightning. And though it was a little bit frightening and then I kind of get lost from there. But that was a very popular song. And not only was this a popular song, but that crossed the genre. I remember this. I remember actually playing this game once. There was a uh, uh, what's an arcade game built on Kung Fu fighting, a sort of a vertical version of Dance Dance Revolution, where you're standing in front of uh, a guy in a karate pose or a kind of, and lights light up on this sort of padded thing and you're supposed to hit where the lights are you know quickly enough and that's how you score points and while you're doing that it's playing the song kung fu fighting so you had uh tv shows you had movies you had uh, uh arcade games you had uh what do you call it? you had um uh a song uh novelty song but there's one more place i want to stop taking us back to saturday mornings and cereal and cartoons and that was a cartoon uh, starring the voice work of Scatman Crothers, who, by the way, also went on to play 
an important role on the uh, Harlem Globetrotters uh, uh, cartoon. Uh, but this first one was called, uh, uh, what was it called? It was called Kung Fu, oh shoot, Kung Fu, Hong Kong Fui, Hong Kong Fui. Uh, which was the story of a dog uh, who was an expert on Kung Fu who uh, solved crimes and caught bad guys and whatnot and the voice by Scatman Carruthers. Uh, so that's a lot of <laughs> Kung Fu uh, all at one time and all uh, in one decade. I, I, I may go f again further into... Uh, novelty songs uh, in the future. I don't want to leave out having the opportunity to talk about Disco Duck and Convoy. Although in Convoy, well, those two things we could talk about too, Disco and and CB radios. Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, no, uh, with a, no hobby or no uh, sort of cultural phenomenon was complete until it had its own uh, novelty song uh, on the radio. So that's our look at the, the spread of Kung Fu uh, across various media in the 1970s. I don't know if there was a Kung Fu serial, uh, but I would think I would know if there had been because I'm pretty up and hip on all of those things. Or a Kung Fu candy bar. Don't know about that either. Well... As always, love to hear from you. What are some of your favorite, uh, maybe cartoons or novelty songs from the 70s or or even uh, just sort of cultural phenomenon? If you want to let us know, if you want to send us an email, we'd love to hear from you. Hello, rcjr at gmail.com. Hello, rcjr at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I had already failed my first test in becoming a gentleman farmer. Three years and roughly 200 chickens produced eggs at a rate of roughly one dollar each. A few years had passed, though, since my experiment in folly, and I was ready to try again. I purchased three recently weaned lambs set up portable fencing on my land, and became a shepherd. Things went rather smoothly until they didn't. Two weeks into the experiment, I looked out into my field and saw a third of the fencing was down. I raced outside to find two of the lambs safe and content, still eating grass. The third also had not run off. No, she had managed to turn the downed fence into a straitjacket. She had gotten herself hopelessly entangled, was on her side and kicking about wildly, tangling herself all the more. I remember grabbing one of the rubber posts and pushing the pointed metal, metal end into the lamb's side, trying to pin her down so I could begin to untangle her. She just kicked all the more. I was sweating, frustrated, and a smidge frightened, and screamed to this little one, my voice echoing across the valley, Be still! I'm trying to help you! And that's when I learned what it means to be a shepherd. Most of us have a rather distorted, city-fied understanding of sheep. We remember from Sunday school that picture of Jesus smiling as he carried that smiling lamb, the one, over his broad shoulders back to the 99. But we never stopped to ask how that one managed to get so far away. Now, the world is full of failed shepherds. Some fail by confusing shepherding with bullying. Most fail by being hirelings, by just not caring. There is, however, a reason why sheep need shepherds. On earth, flesh and blood shepherds. 
because sheep are sinners too. They don't just wander off out of ignorance. They jump over fences to get at what has been forbidden them. They close their ears to the voice of the master and follow their own downward path. They hide when they sense a shepherd has come for them. And when cornered, they will hiss, bite, and kick. Worse still, so often after being carried back to the flock, they run off again. Some are so anti-shepherd, it's hard to tell if they're even sheep at all. Whenever I was blessed to visit another's pulpit, I always tried to work this nugget into my address. I told the gathered saints the hardest thing about being a pastor is not being poorly paid. If that needs to be fixed and you can, please do. The hardest thing about being a pastor isn't the long hours. That doesn't mean you shouldn't call when you're in the emergency room. It does mean if you have a theological question at 9.30 Saturday night, try to wait until after Sunday service to ask. The hardest thing isn't the lack of respect in the church and the world over his calling. If you can help there, please do. The hardest thing about being a pastor is the pain of watching the sheep you love banging their heads against the wall until their wool is like scarlet. The hardest thing about being a shepherd is the pain of loving the sheep. This, though, is the calling of the shepherd. Jesus repeatedly told Peter the implication of Peter's love for Jesus. Feed, tend, feed his sheep. He didn't, that is Jesus, Jesus didn't say the sheep would joyfully receive their food. He didn't say they would return the shepherd's love. He didn't say they would run to him joyfully when they're called. He said to tend them, to feed them, to love them. Feed them the word, love them, and know that the great shepherd of the sheep promises to turn the bloodiest of fleece into the whitest of wool for them and for you. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsportjr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.